Hello everyone, welcome to Professor 3Mac. Today I will show you how to model deformation in porous materials uh, which are having some inherent defects or pores which could be in a material which is manufactured through casting or through additive manufacturing process. And what we're going to do is we're going to see how these materials really behave under compression and we will use Abacus CAE to do so. So the problem definition is such that I will create a cylindrical specimen with a diameter of 2 millimeters and a length of 3 millimeters. I will then apply a compressive boundary condition. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fix the bottom surface of the sample. I will, have, I, will, I will apply a uniform displacement of 1 millimeter from the top. You can also apply pressure as well if you have a force control test in reality. And then after the analysis, we will be able to track the relative density, which is the opposite of the porosity or void volume fraction in the material. And you can see how the porosity or the relative density changes under compression. Since you are compressing in this case, your voids will start to close up and your density porosity will start to decrease and your relative density will increase. And that's what you see. So we give a value of 0.85 as a starting point. And as we start to compress, we reach up to 96% of relative density. It's a very important process in many 3D, 3D printed materials because they use different techniques like hipping and all these kind of pressure, high pressure system techniques to, to improve the density and to remove the porosities in the material. So in order to do that, in the context of Abacus CAE, we need to define three different behaviors. One is the elastic behavior. In this case, we will assume it to be linear elastic isotropic material so we will have to define the Young's modulus and Poisson's ratio while the second part is the deviatoric plasticity and in this case we're going to use the isotropic plasticity behavior abacus only apply allows you to use that if you're if you're going to use the porous plasticity later on so isotropic plastic behavior again i will come back to that in the next few slides and then finally we will also have to define due to the porosity the volume constancy assumption of the yield function is not valid anymore and hence you need to define another criteria, yield criteria, and for that you need to use porous plasticity. So these three things will be defined to have a complete model for a material which will have some inherent defects. So as I said, elastic behavior will be linear isotropic elastic. So we only need Young's modulus and Poisson's ratio. So I'm gonna use again the values for a steel, my favorite material, but you can use your own material definition as well. For isotropic plastic behavior, again, there are videos on the channel on how to define that, how to identify material parameters for isotropic hardening using conventional approach in Abacus and also using different other models like Johnson and Cook model. So please have a look at those videos. But in this case, what I'm going to do, I'm going to use a linear isotropic hardening behavior. So you will have a linear hardening in the material after yielding. And I will define the parameters as this. That I will define a table with yield stress versus plastic strain. And my yield stress initially will be 320 megapascals at zero plastic strain. And at a final value of 0.8 plastic strain, I will use, uh, I have used a value of 500 megapascals. Again, these are assumed values. You can have your non nonlinear function. So you will have to have then many lines in the table and that can define a nonlinear behavior as well. So as I said, you can look at the record, the videos on my channel where I have explained all these things in detail. So remember this, as I told you, this only covers the deviatoric plasticity theory or Fumi's plasticity theory, if you're familiar with that. If you're not familiar with that, then please go back to Abacus documentation or any other mechanics of materials book, which explains these theories. And it is based on the fact that the matrix material has no plasticity if it is under constant, uh, if it's under volumetric loading. So when you are defining, when you put a cube in a hydrostatic state, like if you throw a cube in a deep sea, then under the hydrostatic condition, whether how deep it goes and how high is the pressure, it can never yield. And that's the assumption based on the deviatoric plasticity theory in a very simple manner, if you want to understand that. Now, the third part is the porous plasticity, since when there are voids, inherent voids or defects, which could be due to manufacturing or some other things, then your volume constancy assumption is not valid anymore because your voids or pores can really deform under volumetric loading. They can collapse or they can expand. So your voids can nucleate, can grow, and then later on they can coalesce, which is a failure mode. 
in this case since it's compression so we will have void closures because we will compressing everything so your void will be closing we'll try to close and this means your density will improve so in for porous plasticity model in abacus again there are different models available but i have used a simple gurson type model where you have to define the initial relative density of the material in this case i'm using 0 0.85 generally the recommended value is 0 0.9 which again i will explain later on but in this case it it should be okay to use in my opinion as a thumb rule but if you're really peculiar then you might have to look for other theories as well then you have to define three material coefficients q1 q2 and q3 1 2 and 3 should be subscript and i'm using the values as this again i will explain that in the next few slides so let's look at what it really means by these parameters in abacus the first thing is this is intended to be used for mildly wide metal so you can't use it for foams which have a lot of voids or a material which has a lot of foam or voids inside it so relative density should be around 0.9 or greater but again i have seen people use it for 0.8 or 0.7 as well but i would say go back and check literature and see how you can justify your selection of the model again the theory is based on the analytical solution proposed by gurson in in his uh, 1977 famous paper so again you can have a look at that how this derivation was done and for again porosity itself is inherently included in the model so you can track the porosity avoid volume fraction and this means you can track the relative density of the material that how dense it becomes or how less it dense it becomes depending on the type of loading whether compression or tensile loading so the yield function for this case looks something like this again i'm not going to go into the details of that the derivations but there are some parameters q1 q2 and q3 as i explained here while p sigma y is the yield strength and p is the pressure value while while f is the void volume fraction so you can track the void volume fraction and then the opposite of that will be relative density so you can also track how the relative density is evolving so q1 q2 and q3 as i said the material parameters again if you look at that literature because you need to identify these material parameters from experiment so you can you will find out that for most of the metals these parameters ranges between the values of for example q1 ranges between 1 and 1.5 q2 is generally around 1 and q3 is around again in the range of 1.0 to 2.25 if you also look at the fact there should be a zero here if i substitute this q1 equals to q2 equals to q3 and that should be equals to zero then if i substitute all these values here you will see that the yield function basically converges to the Gurzon model which has you know, these kind of things so this is more more like a, a model which was further evolved as the researchers keep on uh, refining the models and i think this one is the regards model again it's a very famous model in the literature so so i hope this was clear and you can also define the failure criteria based on the porosity for example as you start to expand your material under tensile loading for example your voids will nucleate they will grow and then at certain value of oil volume fraction they will start to coalesce so there is a criteria for that but since we are in the compression zone so we will not have void growth in this case rather we will have void contraction so we can't use that criteria and uh, hence i have i haven't used that for the compression modeling here so again i will leave it for some other day to how to define the damage criteria for uh, metals under compression now you might appreciate that the, the models which are in abacus are not fully updated and they are few decades old models and there are there is a lot of work done in this area so we also did a lot of work in this area if you want if you're really interested to look at different types of models and we look for example you can look at some of the references i have provided here for my our own papers so first one is bit old again 10 years old but in this case what we did was we basically extended the model variational model developed by professor ortiz and his group in caltech and we extended the model to account for the white coalescence and to predict the ductile failure in the metals and again this theory is completely variational so you don't need any evolution equation for another work is basically where we developed that again two-phase constitutive model for porous shape memory allies so shape memory allies show a lot of shape memory effect martensitic transformation and then also super elasticity so we developed a model for that i also published a paper on porous crystal plasticity models where you want to do some kind of microstructure based model so again this model is 
there as well if you're interested in that also we did a lot of work on titanium alloys which can be single dual phase and they can have also metastable state as well so we have developed a few models for that as well so again you can look at the references which are shown here in this case and also here in in this case where we we published it in modeling and simulation material science and engineering and again we can use these models for industrial application like metal forming etc while we are tracking all the microstructural uh, deformation mechanisms and also failure mechanisms so these are some of the papers which if you are interested in the topic on modeling and, and simulating the porous materials under tension or compression and also the damage in them then you can have a look at these papers and if you have any questions then you, you are always welcome to ask myself okay let's jump into abacus and now uh, see how you can really model what we are trying to do here thank you very much and see you on the other side